Artificial intelligence. It is supposed to make our lives easier. From robots taking over mundane tasks to the technology that unlocks your smartphone by scanning your face. But is that technology really colorblind, really gender blind. A study by researchers at MIT shows that the gender of darker skinned women was incorrectly identified 35% of the time. So just how do we unbias AI? We spoke with Timnit Gerbru, a postdoctoral researcher at Microsoft who is studying bias in AI systems. Take a listen. I don't know if we can unbias it completely, but we can try to mitigate the bias and we can try to mitigate the effects of the bias. So I think that the first thing we need to do and what I'm working on right now is give people guidelines as to how and where a particular data set can be used, a particular API can be used. So for example, some of your most recent research along with Joy Bualamwini showed facial recognition software is far less accurate for women and specifically women of color than for white men. That it's essentially sexist and racist. Can you explain? So in this work, what we did was we looked at commercial gender classification systems. So what they do is they look at a picture of a face and they tell you whether the picture in it is that of a man or a woman, male or female, binary classification. Um, they don't handle any other types of identities. And so even in this uh, case, when we looked at the accuracies and we break them down by the intersection of race and gender, so not just, um, not sorry, I don't even want to say race, because race is not a very uh, well-defined thing. So we looked at skin type. So we look at the Fitzpatrick skin tone, which is a dermatologist approved uh, way of looking at the skin type. So as the skin type gets darker and darker uh, for women, darker skinned women, this facial, uh, this gender classification system has worse and worse error rates and it approaches random chance. So an answer to your earlier question, one of the ways in which we can mitigate this bias could be to try and gather more uh, diverse training sets and also test our algorithms by different pop subpopulations. Instead of just having one single number that says my algorithm has a particular accuracy, it might sound nice, 90%, but then when you break it down by subpopulations, you might then see that it works much better for some populations than others. So is this something that Apple's Face ID, for example, has a problem with? I have not done a systematic study of Apple's Face ID, but I know that there was um, this um, highly publicized article, for example, of this uh, Chinese woman who said that her this Face ID did not work well on her, right? So I am pretty sure this is a, a problem that happens across the board in most industries across, not even just face recognition, but other types of algorithms as well. So face ID, facial recognition is just one example, but what are the consequences of this on the broader scale? If we don't start retraining these algorithms or rewriting these algorithms and get new data to fix it. One thing I think that people don't understand is that AI components are being used everywhere by everyone. I mean, this is everywhere, everyone is an exaggeration, but they're being used in many different places in many high stakes scenarios. So for example, if you look at face recognition algorithms, they're being used to identify what people think are who people think are criminals, they're being used for surveillance, and whether or not face recognition should be used for surveillance is one debate that people should have anyway. But um, even if it were to be used for surveillance, uh, we have to make people understand that these face recognition algorithms are not accurate enough to be used for surveillance. You say that women are at a bigger risk of losing jobs because of this. How so? I, I'm not sure if women are unilaterally at a bigger uh, risk of losing jobs because of AI. But I do think that anybody who is marginalized in this moment in our society is at a higher risk of losing jobs because of AI. And this is because many of the, the lower paying jobs that are uh, more easily automatable are being done by people who are from lower income, they're being done by people who are who have been historically marginalized. So I think anybody who, has, who, who our society has marginalized is more likely to lose jobs. Because How of much AI. of this would be solved by getting more women and people of color into AI and into machine learning? And how much of this we can't solve because it's already been done? I think that a lot of um, issues of bias could be mitigated by not only having more 
people who are from historically marginalized communities in this in AI, but also just interacting with these people. So it's not a coincidence that the two p authors of the paper that you were just describing on uh, gender classification systems and showing how biased they are are black women, mm -hmm. right? So so if you're not interfacing with people who are negatively affected by bias in AI, you're less likely to think that this problem is a big problem. Do you think companies like Microsoft, like Facebook, like Google, are doing enough to build diverse teams and try to make sure that the bias doesn't get rewritten over and over again? No. I don't think companies are doing enough to um, build diverse teams. I absolutely don't. And I, I would say this unilaterally across tech companies, there is a lot more talking about diversity than there is action. Sure, there, there is some action going on, but it's not a priority. Um, I think that when it comes down to it, f uh, the people at the leadership positions need to make it a priority. So they need to spend as much time on trying to uh, fix this problem as they do thinking about trying to maximize profit or something like that. And I don't think that people in leadership positions are spending enough time thinking so about this.